Trust me, I'm not being over dramatic when I tell you that being stronger as an over 50s runner is life changing. It can often come across as a fancy gimmick or a way for people to show off on the internet. But truthfully, deep down, it is something that will improve the quality of your running and the longevity of your life. Today, I will share with you the five best bodyweight exercises that'll change your life as a 50 plus year old runner. Because they are bodyweight exercises, there really is no excuse for you not to do them. There's no need for any fancy equipment or even for you to have to go to a gym. An even better reason to do them is that they don't just make you stronger, but they also improve your mobility and stability all in one go. Let's get into it. So the first exercise is not going to win any awards for creativity. In fact, it's actually quite boring, but it is probably the most important bodyweight exercise you can do as a runner over the age of 50. If you don't want healthy knees, mobile hips, stable ankles, and a longer life expectancy, then don't do this. Okay, the squats. Now technique for a squat is absolutely critical. In fact, for all five of these exercises, your technique has to be sound to reduce your risk of injury. Okay, so with the squat technique, the first thing to focus on is a good solid base. So getting your foot position right is key. You wanna have your feet shoulder width apart. In some cases, you can actually have your feet slightly wider than your shoulder width apart, especially if you do struggle with tight hips and poor hip mobility. A very common mistake I see when I ask someone to do a squat, if I stand side on, very often if I say, do a squat for me, people just immediately drop their hips, their knees fly forward, and as you can see, my heels actually wanna come up off the floor. Again, hip and ankle mobility could be an issue there, but in terms of technique for the squat, we really don't wanna be just dropping the hips down. Important is to keep the weight on your heels, so shift it back on your feet, and actually focus on driving the hip back. So you want your bum, in my case, driving towards the wall behind me and ensuring that my knee does not extend in front of my toes. So, nice solid base. Starting point, making sure that the body is upright as well. So shoulders back, chest out, and you wanna be looking straight up ahead of you. Trying to keep your torso upright as much as possible. We will then push the bum back, squat as deep as your range can allow, and standing up nice and straight. Again, my eye line has been looking straight in front of me and not down at my feet. The minute you start looking down at your feet, what happens is your head actually weighs quite a lot. And if you look down at your feet and you do your squat, your whole body wants to fall forward. So important to look up ahead of you, shoulders back, chest out, bum back, down into a good squat. Have a look, my body's almost upright and drive up. The squat has to be more of an action from the knee than a hinge at the hip. Another common mistake I see when doing a squat is someone will often leave their hips up in the air and they'll just drop their chest down to the floor. If I just come front on again and do another rep, another thing I'd like you to think about is your knees. So again, as we're going down into the squat, make sure that your knees and toes are tracking in the same line and stand back up. Try and avoid your knees diving in or even diving out. I tend to find if you stand with your feet or your toes pointing out, your knees tend to dive out for a squat. Now what happens if you do have poor hip mobility and you struggle with the range of motion to get really deep into a squat? One of my favorite variations to this or tools you can use are wedges underneath your heels. Now, when I say wedges, you could use a book or two books of preferably the same thickness, piece of wood. In this case, I'm going to use two weight plates that are obviously the same thickness. You're gonna take these weight plates and you are going to place them underneath your heels. So making sure that your feet are the right width apart, 
This just elevates your heels slightly. I mentioned keeping the weight on your heels and back. We still want to be doing that. So you still want to be forcing the weight onto your heels. But now by elevating your heels slightly, it allows for better mobility in the hips. So same thing, shoulders back, chest out, driving back into the heels, down into that squat. I can get a little bit deeper, standing up nice and strong and really driving those hips forward. So all of the exercises I'm showing you today can be done as its own session at least two to three times a week. But I love it when people do mini doses throughout the day. For example, when you're sitting waiting for the kettle to boil, it's easy to pop in a couple of squats. Doing them as tiny doses throughout the day will have no impact on your schedule, but it'll have a huge impact on your strength. Okay, let's move on to the next four. The final one is what the runners who do our live strength classes shout at me the most for when I make them do it. But it is so important for masters runners. Number two is targeting your quads as well as being great for your hamstrings and glutes. So next up is the lunge. Now I'm going to start this off with a basic version of the lunge and then add one or two progressions to that. So starting with a static lunge, you want to have your right leg in this instance in front, back leg behind you or left leg behind you. And really what's important here is that your stride is at the right length to get a quality lunge in, but you also don't want to be over striding. Very often when I ask someone to do a lunge, I tend to find that they lean forward. So it's this forward motion. Have a look, my knees now extend past my toes. My front heel wants to come up and my back leg is almost straight. So now we're working into the hip flexors, which we shouldn't be doing here. So let's start that again. Both sets of toes pointing forward. Again, shoulders back, chest out for a good, strong upper body position. And as we come down into the static lunge, keeping upright, it's a downward movement. So getting 90 degree angles on both knees and standing up nice and strong. Again, if you had to draw a line down the side of my body, the movement should be down and up. You can obviously do all the reps on one side and when you do switch over, again, just think about how far that stride is, down nice and deep, knee angles, driving up and keeping weight on that front heel. Now, once you've become accustomed to that lunge movement and it becomes a little bit easier, we can then progress into a forward lunge. Everything stays exactly the same in terms of knee angles, in terms of stride length, but all we're doing now is actually stepping into this motion. So standing upright, my right leg, we are going to step forward and then down into that lunge. So the same as the static lunge, have a look at body position and knee angles. And then with the front leg, pushing hard back into a standing position. So again, I'm gonna do this, standing upright, front leg, step forward, down and drive into an upward straight position. What you can do is with this one is alternate sides. So doing two reps here, I'll go right first, then left, right leg, forward, body position, driving up, left leg, forward, body position, driving up. With the forward lunge, your front leg now becomes a driving leg. So from the lower position, power out that front leg to drive you into a standing position. So now that we've focused on the upper leg, let's work our way down to the lower leg. Did you know that the calf plays a significant role during running in absorbing the impact from the ground? This reduces the stress on your knees and your hips, reducing the risk of injury. So strengthening your calves has a direct crossover to better knee and hip health. And number three does exactly that. What I'm talking about here is a calf raise. So in this instance, I'm actually going to use the wall for a bit of balance. So we wanna keep 
our feet flat on the floor and you can actually have your feet a little narrower than what shoulder width is. Try and focus on keeping the body in a nice straight position. So squeeze the glutes, drive the hips forward. And from here, just driving up high onto your toes, you can hold it for a second or two and then ease yourself back down to the floor. The idea here for this calf raise is not to try and bounce up and down as quick as you can. So I mentioned speed and how slow we do this. So driving up, hold it for a second and down so that your heel comes all the way back down to the ground. Drive up and down. And again, keeping those hips forward. Very often when I ask someone to do a calf raise, I tend to find they lean forward, hips and their bums pointing back. Try and stay upright, drive up and back down. Now as a variation to this, or rather a progression to this, we can now do this on a single leg. So standing, in this case on my left leg, take the weight off the right leg, exactly the same movement, heel on the ground to start, push the hips forward and we'll come up high onto those toes, hold it for a second and back down. Drive up, hold for a second and back down keeping a nice solid flat body position and then obviously alternating to the other side and back down. Drive up and control back down. If you are following at home, don't be scared to take a breather now and then and also do these at a pace that's manageable for you. Now, if you struggle running up hills, this next exercise is going to be a game changer for you. Because so many runners have weak glute muscles, your hips tend to tighten and close up, forcing your knee to dive inwards. Not only does this impact your running efficiency and power output, but also puts you at a higher risk of injury. Next up is the glute bridge. This one you're going to be lying down on your back, making sure that your lower back is nice and flat on the floor. You wanna try and keep a 90 degree angle in your knees and your feet flat on the floor. You wanna keep your hands flat on the floor next to you. Try and imagine also really driving your feet down into the ground. Then the hip or the glute bridge is going to be driving the hips up and you wanna almost try and get your body into a flat position. So almost into a plank shape and back down towards the ground. You can lift your toes up towards the roof, which will help you force your heels into the ground a little bit more. And again, drive those hips up, squeeze the glutes nice and tight, hold it for a second or two, and back down. You'll feel your glutes and your hamstrings really triggering in this movement. As a progression to this, again, once you have become a little bit more comfortable with this movement, we can do a single leg glute bridge. Everything stays exactly the same in terms of our position, our knee angles, and in this case, it's just lifting one leg up off the ground. Do try and keep your knees together throughout the entire movement. So driving the left foot or heel into the ground, hips up, squeeze those glutes, and have a look, I'm trying to keep my knees level. You don't wanna come up and lift the leg up so super high. Knees together, drive the hips up and control back to the ground. And then obviously swap sides and do the other leg. By doing the glute bridge and strengthening our glutes, it opens our hips up and allows for a more stable hip. As a result, it improves the alignment of our knee so it's a lot easier for us to produce force in a forward linear motion when running, as opposed to those weak hips, knees diving in, having to work harder to move forward. So we've covered glutes, hamstrings, quads, calves, but what's missing from this are the stabilizers that pull all these muscle groups together. It is important to remember that all of these exercises are for runners with healthy bodies. If you have any injuries or issues, YouTube definitely is not the place for you to get personalized strength plans for your running needs. If that's you, 
definitely check out our Faster Beyond 50 training framework where we have helped many runners over the age of 50 implement these strategies for their specific needs. I'll drop a link in the description below for you to find out more. So with that in mind, this final exercise is going to work on your upper body strength and core stability, which is an amazing thing for your running efficiency. Now to tie it all in, we're gonna focus on upper body and core work at the same time, pretty much in the same exercise. As I mentioned, not a lot of people enjoy this exercise, so really do start it off slow and think about the coordination of the movement rather than trying to rattle through it quite quickly. We are going to start off in a nice flat push-up position and then work our way down onto our elbows into a prone plank position and then back up into the push-up position. So, to get to that, focus is to have your hands directly below your shoulders, not out in front of you, and your feet are shoulder width apart. Starting, as I mentioned, in that push-up position, not having your bum up in the air, you wanna have a nice flat body position, and then from there, coming down into the plank position, slow and controlled. So right hand down or onto the right elbow, down onto the left elbow, then leading again, right hand up onto the left hand. You can then alternate sides, down on the left elbow, down on the right elbow, up on the left hand, up on the right hand. Quite an important thing to think about here is to avoid any rocking of the hips or the shoulders. So as you're coming down, keep those hips as still and stable as possible. No rocking from side to side. And again, driving up nice and controlled. As a regression to this, if you do struggle in a push-up position, you can get into a modified push-up position. So being on your knees, just make sure that you drive those hips forward. So now the body is nice and flat and exactly the same movement. Down onto the elbow, left elbow, right hand, left hand. Alternating sides, nice and controlled. Remember that improving your strength as an over 50 runner takes time and consistency. But if you are looking for immediate results, go and check out this video for a fascinating, simple strategy that will get you feeling better in your runs immediately as soon as you start doing it.